Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will look at pivot tables, data, pivot table. It will automatically select the entire data range, which is from A1 till L1994 in my case. But if you want to select it manually, you can always do that. I would have created on a new sheet, click on create. And you can see here that a pivot table has been created. Now, some suggestions are being given to me. So on the right side, we have a suggestion that says that average of sales for each subcategory. If I click on that, it automatically creates a pivot summary for me, where we have subcategories, then we have all the sales value and we can look at the average. If you want to change the average to the sum, you can do that here by selecting the sum like this. So let us remove this, what we have done. Let me cancel subcategory and sales. We have four options available. If you have done this on Excel, it's very similar to that. We have row, column, values and filter. In rows, what we want to add is something very simple. I will add my region. So we have Central, East, South and West. Then in my column, we want to keep our business segment. And then in the values, we want to keep our sales value. Works perfectly. If you want to change the type of aggregation or summary from sum to something else, we can do that here. For example, count will tell me the number of transactions in each region, in each segment. We can also add a filter for, let us say, my ship mode. And in the filter, we can say that we only want to look at first class and standard class. And the data gets filtered to only show me first and standard class. Remember, we can do this using a slicer as well. So on data, we have slicer and we can insert a slicer for the ship mode like this. And then here also we can select, let's say only same day and standard class like this. Right? So same day, standard class, here we are selecting first class, standard class. Now, unlike Excel, where the slicer is connected with the filter that we have, remember that here that would not be the case. So just be careful of that. Make sure to use only one. Don't use both of them unless you're sure about what exactly you're doing. Let me change the sales back to sum. We can also add additional rows, which means that inside my region, we can also add my state. So now we get two levels like this. And obviously, if you want to minimize, we can click on the minus sign. And if you want to maximize, you can click on the plus sign. So as you can see, pivots in Google Sheets is not as powerful as you have it on Excel, but it gets the job done. And most of the common things that you would expect are available here. Let's say we want to make a chart as well. So insert chart. And in the chart, we want to make a few changes. So let me not put my state on the X axis. I'll remove it. We want to put our hold on. So what we want to do here is to be able to do it a little differently. So to make it cleaner, let me first remove the state from my pivot. And now you can see it looks much better. Obviously, we can also change the type of chart. So right click and chart style. And we can say that rather than making a column chart, we want to make maybe this one, a 100% stacked bar chart. And this tells us very nicely, the percentage contribution coming from each of the segments for all the four regions. 
as you can see in home office central and east have zero sales that's why the third part is not coming and otherwise everything is working properly needless to say the slicer is connected to both the pivot and the chart so if i select let us say all the shipping modes the pivot also changes and the chart changes at the same time 